We'll get started. Thank you, everybody, for, for those of you who are able to join. I know there is a lot going on right now. Um, and all of us are uh, pretty stretched. Um, uh, we wanted to bring in something uh, for everybody uh, related to this recent climate disaster and how it intersects with um, our utility, particularly CPS Energy, the energy utility that failed in uh, providing electricity and gas. Uh, there's a lot of overlap uh, with water as well. That energy and uh, water nexus is for real. Um, I do want to just introduce a couple of concepts because we are recording and this hopefully will be going out broadly into the community. Uh, many folks on this call may already be fairly familiar uh, but what we mean when we talk about CPS energy, um, we swap out, um, we're talking about a service territory um, that covers not just Bear County, right? So uh, it's, uh, CPS is uh, the the largest municipally owned. That means owned by the residents of San Antonio. Um, energy utility with providing both natural gas and electricity. There's about 850 customers, um, owners uh, that get their electricity from CPS and about 350 for gas. Um, and uh, again, this is a, it's a big city, a big county, uh, but then we're also seeing the service territory go into to other areas. You'll notice that uh, up into Como County, up into Medina, Medina County, uh, and in not so much, but in Atascosa County. Um, and if you were in this area, uh, it's very likely that you experience outages. Uh, I think up to 400, almost 400,000 people were left without power uh, during this winter storm that came through. Um, and that's left people with a lot of questions um, and uh, natural gas prices sp spiked during this period, so there's a lot of people wondering also uh, if they have their energy turned back on, what they're going to end up owing, and there's a big question mark on that. Um, so related to, to CPS, though, I'll just go real quickly through this. Um, uh, we get our energy here from a variety of sources. Uh, we've been involved in, to this point, uh, a, a, a slow move right further into renewable energy and storage options. Um, historically, uh, this was in the, like in the 50s, this was a big gas uh, utility. Uh, they ex expanded into coal, they expanded into nuclear, uh, and into wind, and to a lesser degree into solar. Um, and it's important to know that, that all, all of these sources uh, fail to one degree or another. Wind is not nearly to the level that it's been made out to in the, the media. There were some farms that, that grows, uh, but the big sources that we rely on in this time of year uh, are the base loads and, and, and gas. Gas was the big one. Uh, so our gas, uh, there were frozen wellheads uh, and uh, that one of the coal plants went down. Uh, originally, they, they said it was because of one thing, but but now we think it was because they were unable to physically get the coal to the plant. Uh, one of the nuclear plants failed uh, in that weather, so the collapse here was, was kind of across the board as it has been across the aircraft spectrum. Um, and uh, we obviously we we're you know in this in this in this huge moment um, with. Um, so with with COVID continuing, we're, we're now seeing you know the, the potential of this, uh, uh, of this winter storm driving people inside into shelters uh, as another super spreader event. We're seeing variants of COVID nineteen uh, crop up, and uh, we're we're far from being, uh, there. And we know when 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 COVID hit, there was a huge economic, a public health crisis and an economic crisis uh, that uh, communities. Uh, across San Antonio have been working to address um, and, and, and I think probably two things now that, that that's been compounded uh, by by this storm, uh, we also want to talk about uh, climate. So when you want to, to start a conversation about utility, that this connections, these, these, these issues, these are the things that CPS can respond to. The, the big rolling blackouts across the state is is kind of ERCOT territory and utilities elsewhere. But when ERCOT came to San Antonio uh, and asked for you know seven percent of the state load, they asked for you know our energy to, to, to be drawn down. How that was 
is done is all about CPS, right? So the, the, the outages were about our utility, uh, the blackouts, the way they were managed were about our utility, um, our rates and our debt and uh, the accum accumulation of that debt from COVID on. Uh, we've been able to keep disconnections from happening and that's at a, at a local state and at a federal level for those reasons. Um, but there's a community organizations here that adopted uh, in October and issued an open letter uh, with five demands. And the very first one had to do with disconnections. Uh, and to, to, to this moment, uh, we haven't had uh, disconnections come into force. What we have is uh, residents coming in or, or kind of being coerced and drawn into payment plans. Uh, and if you come into a payment plan arrangement, uh, that they'll, they'll, they'll leave your energy on or, you know, um, but that debt accumulates, that debt accrues. And we know that uh, along with that, when, when you do end up uh, going on to a payment plan, you end up you're paying two bills at once, you know, uh, and it becomes really unwieldy and unmanageable for a large part of our community. Uh, we had other demands that went into that letter in terms of uh, making conservation, which is now critical in response to the storm, being left out entirely of the, con of the conversation. Conservation could be a tool, weatherization of communities and homes. There could be a green core across the city, improving uh, uh, people's homes, improving their lives, keeping their bills down. There's a lot of opportunity there that hasn't been addressed at all. And I will say to this open letter, we got zero response from the mayor, from the council, or the board of trustees at CBS Energy. Later, much later, almost a year after this, this, this letter came out, um, uh, uh, well, after the initial report uh, on efficiency came out, that we be began to engage with CPS. So you can see some of these main points that were, uh, uh, were brought forward currently, and for the purposes of this call, we want to look at exp expanding number one. So we know that the burden that's placed on people is not just about whether the power is on or whether the power is off. Um, it's about the rates um, and fair rates. It's about um, the debt that people are accruing and debt forgiveness. It's about how our housing, you know, we know housing, not all housing is created equally. And even if all of us, even if the entire city went black, uh, we know that people in better homes and more weatherized and efficient homes don't suffer in the same way as people who are are in homes that, you know, manera, green, you know, that there is no insulation or very little or, you know, no gaps around the windows and all that kind of thing. So that's something to be mindful viento. of. And then uh, just energy justice in general. Um, one thing general that, that we created and I want to put up there for folks to, to, um, to participate uh, is Me this, que um, uh, allow everybody is this poll. Can folks, are folks able to, to see this? Encuesta. Okay. Si ver esta I'm sorry, Leti, that I was speaking faster than I intended to. I guess raise your hand if you're able to see Por favor, the poll. Okay, la mano si, si pueden ver. Si no pueden ver la encuesta, mejor. So this is where we want to know kind of where people are. People are coming from different places, um, and different, different levels, different levels. Las situaciones y los intereses y las necesidades de todos ustedes. If you're primarily interested in, si you know, programs, how the city, how CPS, how we can help one another weatherize and, and better uh, uh, protect, protect ourselves and our neighbors in, in, in our homes, in our homes, that's kind of like the first one, utility debt and debt forgiveness. Um, if folks are voting in there, um, that's, you know, um, we talked about the accruing debt. Um, yeah, and and how we're going to deal with that. Right now, we know that um, we don't know the number, I think. Um, but number, natural gas prices went sky high. And, and we were, buying, we were on the market buying that gas. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of ways we can address this. I see five, para two, esto. almost everybody's voted. Good. Veo que Thank, casi you todos Thank you, votado. everybody. Muchas gracias a todos. Um, I'm going to be turning over in a second the, in this momento, presentation to Tim Barr, because everybody Tim Barr. has voted. Uh, and good, I just I'll put out the results. Uh, now, Tim, uh, the, 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 we've created this as, uh, as a response to this winter storm, uh, to this climate crisis. 
uh, and, and now on the back of built upon that the suffering and uh, built upon the back of the the pandemic. Así que quiero explorar maneras de responder a ello para la política que podemos desarrollar, que podemos intentar implementar, llevarlo hacia el alcalde y con el consejo, presentarles estas investigaciones de cómo llegamos aquí, por qué quedaron tantas personas sin energía, sin calefacción, dos, tres días, las muertes, no sabemos cuántas muertes hubo, pero sabemos que todavía estamos encontrando gente en sus hogares que han estado ya muertos un poco. También vamos a hablar de el racismo medioambiental, donde las ciudades más ricas y más económicas the most racially segregated of cities. San Antonio uh, es una de las ciudades más done, uh, segregadas uh, racialmente. Have, have moved to specifically um, uh, reflect the needs of, uh, for the most part, Anglo residents, uh, high income residents. Más and that's why development has gone kind of fans to the north and not responden, to the south. And when we look at utility burden, and, and this is a conversation that will evolve, uh, but I was looking at a map the other day of utility burden, meaning like how much people, how much of our income, people's one's income uh, goes to paying for water and power. Uh, and decir, uh, you know, it was like 3% up here in that fan, and there was one zip code in the south públicos. that was just dark, dark purple. Uh, it was, and I don't know the zip code right now, but it was no like uh, ahora, a quarter, um, morado, uh, one of every $4 that go into that house go out again to these two utilities that are owned públicos. by the San Antonio. Um, but I do want to introduce, so, so Tim is kind of, he's in the, excuse me, public health uh, field. Uh, he's been researching these issues for the past several months um, and has brought some really interesting findings, I think primarily to spark conversation, uh, to, to look at what do other cities, other communities, other states, are they, uh, what are they doing uh, in the realm of, of energy justice? So I think at, at that, I can, I can turn it over. And Tim, thank you for being with us and everybody who's able to join. Uh, again, this is being recorded and will be shared we'll in both Spanish and we'll have English tanto en inglés como en español, version as y well. vamos a compartir need Spanish translation al final. on the bottom of your screen, um, uh, you'll see a, a translation icon. Uh, thank you, Tim. I'm going to let you uh, go from here. Thank you, Greg, for that introduction. I'm Gracias really grateful to be here with you, and I know you have other options for what you do on Sunday afternoons. So, uh, I'm glad that you're here. I'm excited about this conversation. I am certainly uh, not going to claim, you know, special Voy expertise, uh, but I've been learning on this, and I just want to frame the conversation and offer y quiero simplemente dar un marco para la conversación y ofrecer ideas que he encontrado por mi investigación y también modelos de otras ciudades para apoyar una conversación y un análisis en nivel local. Aquí voy a intentar de desarrollar un lenguaje compartido y luego tendremos preguntas y respuestas y discusiones más profundas. About energy justice and energy Me da gusto democracy. que la mayoría de ustedes quieran hablar sobre justicia uh, energética y democracia energética. Podemos as, as hablar más forward. sobre esa parte de nuestro análisis. So, you know, just to al, start, um, I think it's important. I, I recognize a lot of the, the names that um, Reconozco mucho de los nombres de quienes han venido hoy a este um, and webinar. So I think most of you are already familiar with Creo que la mayoría de ustedes ya conocen a CPS Energy. Pero para regresar a los orígenes, originally stood for city Originalmente ese nombre eran las siglas de City Public Service. Era un servicio público propiedad del municipio, pero funciona más bien como una corporación. No parece haber mucha democracia energética cuando se hacen las decisiones. Por eso queremos tener esta conversación para examinar no solamente las fuentes, de, de energía, sino también los apagones y la deuda de los servicios públicos. Quiero comenzar por reconocer que estamos en terreno ancestral de los Pueblotecas. Quiero comenzar nuestra conversación en este punto para honrar y reconocer a los originales guardianes de este terreno. Yo personalmente 
here soy un visitante o un invasor um, en este lugar. That history, Quiero the legacy reconocer esa historia, created, el legado um, que eso ha creado. Also, um, to, to name y and también nombrar y celebrar la perseverancia y la fuerza de uh, los pueblos indígenas. Place, but, uh, no solo aquí, sino so en todas to, las tierras. To los invito a que se unan conmigo a tener unos momentos de silencio para recordar los guardianes originales de esta tierra. So sometimes when we talk about disasters, a veces cuando hablamos sobre desastres, a very narrow, uh, focus tenemos on, una definición example, muy angosta. The, the polar vortex and the Por ejemplo, el vórtice polar, power and, and what el hecho de que la gente, mucha gente perdió luz, ¿qué, qué significó eso. Pero también hay que reconocer que había desastres um, antes de esos desastres. Cuando tenemos sistemas, no, problemas, a nivel sistémico tenemos que tener soluciones a nivel sistémico. For utility assistance or to fix broken pipes. No solamente we need a deeper analysis of what went wrong, what's been going wrong throughout our COVID response, and even what's been broken in our economic stru structures long before any of these crises of the last few weeks or even of the last year. So we need to talk about racism. We need to talk about white supremacy. We need to talk about historical trauma and how that keeps getting passed from one generation to the next. These disasters present an opportunity to reimagine how things work and to imagine, especially at a policy level. That's the opportunity. So that's part of the reason we're going to talk about Uh, I know nobody indicated that they wanted to talk about sé debt, que nadie but that is a very specific de, policy. Nadie indicó uh, que querían like hablar sobre la deuda, pero eso es una política muy específica, igual que las dimensiones, que le da más fuerza so al análisis de lo que está ocurriendo. Sería demasiado simple decir que las personas que no tienen recursos solo tienen que tener más resiliencia. Me encanta esta cita. Sabemos it's, it's que los que happens. sufren so de pobreza crónica no tienen opción más que ser resilientes. Housing, medical needs, utility Entre bills, one sudden vivienda, setback can lead to a negative salud, so in other words, you can't just look at this todo esto of se junta ago, y puede llevarte a una espiral negativa. Por lo tanto, no podemos simplemente ver lo que pasó la semana pasada, so, sino um, también todo lo que llevó a las circunstancias en las que estábamos en ese momento. Es la noción de una reserva de resiliencia, que es la idea de que las personas viviendo en un estado de crónica de la vida han ya estado tomando esa reserva, pero tienen su propia sensación de resiliencia que están tomando en cualquier desastre, incluyendo una reserva de resiliencia interminable sobre la cual, de la cual pueden so sacar fuerzas. At. Due to COVID, CPS estamos. has placed a moratorium COVID, on utility disconnections. CPS and after no last week's polar vortex, uh, Governor CPS. Abbott directed the State Public Utilities Commission to create a temporary moratorium on shutoffs due to non-payment resulting from uh, that disaster. On a federal level, we know that there's $1.9 trillion dollars of a stimulus package that's moving through Congress. Um, and it includes support for low-income families facing utility debt, but that's Uh, it's, it's, it's part of a much Congreso larger package, and those dollars that have been uh, earmarked are also supposed to also go for housing assistance. So it's not Pero exactly clear what amount of money is going to be available vivienda. specifically uh, for utilities, support, um, both, you know, in terms of uh, people público. trying to pay their bills now and, and, and debt that's accumulated over the, the last ahora, year or longer. So what we do know is that there are 19.1 billion dollars to provide the most assistance to state and local governments and help with utility bills, renta, and then there's also another $10 billion dollars to assist homeowners. Um, but that's, públicos. again, at the larger level, not Pero just utility un, uh, bills, but it's also grande, mortgage no bills, property taxes, and other services. Públicos, sino también, so even with este, these federal renta, stimulus etc. dollars, if they were enough, which I doubt they were, aún based con on estos, these headlines and things that I've been con reading, el even if those were enough aún dollars si eso fuera to suficiente, cover cosa que no creo, the amount of utility debt that has been created, the other question that needs to ask creada. ourselves is, is household energy a basic human right? Es un derecho humano tener energía 
Should in people with medical casa? conditions, should they nuestros have their ancianos, nuestros niños, because they can't gen, pay? Las personas Particularly con in the cold medicas world, deberían they perder they have here, su in energía the parts cuando of the no year. pueden pagar. Even if we aren't experiencing a pandemic, should Aun that ever no be the case? Una pandemia, and I would say eso from, from a caso? perspective of, of y yo justice, diría, desde una uh, perspectiva no, de justicia is, energética, is, no. Is the answer that, La that we probably no. would all agree on. Y creo que todos estaríamos de acuerdo. So when we're talking about household energy and the fact that some of the basic energy needs are not being met, we're talking about the concept of energy security. And it's related to food insecurity, which is more commonly known. So we don't have enough food, the ability to pay for food. Um, and it's also related to housing insecurity, which is about housing insecurity. And a lot of times that trifecta of insecurities um, are, are kind of acknowledged for their relationships uh, between each other. They're part of that broader economic system that's broken. Now, roughly the same number of U.S. households broke. experience food insecurity as energy insecurity, and many muchos, experience both, but there's a, a very different public perception uh, la inseguridad económica como inseguridad energética como inseguridad alimentaria. Um, como pueden ver en la pantalla, una de las herramientas que se han desarrollado para medir um, la inseguridad energética, your energy security if you have no problems, your moderately energy insecurity if had Usted tiene seguridad energética si no tiene problemas, tiene inseguridad energética moderada si le han amenazado con desconexión en los últimos 12 meses y tiene inseguridad energética severa si ya le han cortado la luz o usted calentó su hogar con una estufa o tuvo uno o más días sin calentación o aire acondicionado. Hay que reconocer que no es solamente económico. Muchas veces pensamos no solamente sobre la carga energética relativa al ingreso, eso es parte, pero también hay que ver las estructuras de las viviendas y su relación a la inseguridad energética, así como las estrategias que las personas utilizan para sobrellevar estas situaciones. So this is a graphic from a called so, Turn de parte del in California. Network. And I love how they've pulled together these Tiene different forma. pieces of health impact as Tiene it relates to energy insecurity. So broadly speaking, we know that energy insecurity, um, some of those gente. health outcomes include increased stress, mental Sabemos health challenges, muchas, impaired sleep, de las, heat stress, and cardiovascular and Lo que resulta de la inseguridad energética muchas veces es un estrés, enfermedad, hambre. Sabemos que muchos experimentan estrés crónico y eso también es cierto de grupos marginados fácilmente. Y esto impacta su habilidad a responder al estrés que resulta de un desastre, como por ejemplo la tormenta Ori. Is, is part of what I was talking about earlier, de, resilience reserves. It's, it's, de it's withdrawing more and more from an account that's already being depleted. Sacar más y más Which makes it harder de una for some families and some individuals to bounce menos. back from an event like Winter Storm Uri. We also know um, from the public difícil health literature and medical literature that chronic stress tormentador. increases susceptibility to adverse health effects. Este estrés Specifically for children living in poverty, this can impact brain development, and increase the puede afectar el desarrollo cerebral de los niños y los puede volver más susceptibles al asma, depresión, etc. Una de las cosas más comunes es el dilema de comer o calentamiento. I wonder though, in the summer, um, for us, if maybe it's air conditioning or malnutrition, I don't, I don't know what the right en el verano, no sé cómo rimaría en el verano, pero básicamente Muchas personas tienen que escoger si van a satisfacer sus necesidades de calefacción o de enfriamiento o si van a comer. También nuestros ancianos y personas de, de bajos ingresos tienden más bien a querer aguantar y por lo tanto mueren de calor. Esto es una realidad que sabemos que debe de impactar la manera en que nos comunicamos y las políticas que desarrollamos.
So as we think about energy insecurity, we have to differentiate between what happened for pretty much everyone in Texas last week, which is acute energy insecurity. So if you look on the bottom of this chart, the bottom left side, you see short-term acute energy insecurity. It's slightly blue, but that doesn't really come out very well on your screen. So many of us, most of us, almost everybody in Texas experience short-term acute energy insecurity that can happen when there's some kind of disaster or like a gas leak um, and it's temporary and while it has impact it's certainly not the same as what happens over and over impact, which is no what is termed chronic energy insecurity with long-term challenges to affording and accessing essential energy needs. So what we know about climate change lo que sobre is that while it will lead climático. to acute energy insecurity es que for everyone, um, severe, you know, the, the increase of extreme weather events like what we had two weeks ago, that, clima, that will continue to happen. We also know that pasando. whether it's acute or chronic, but especially Sabemos if it's chronic, ya, it will disproportionately sea, affect people sea um, who, who have agudo fewer resources, but lower income um, and, and environmental racism also tells us it's going to primarily impact people of color. It's going to impact in a, in a heavier way. Um, and, and to what to reinforce what I mentioned on the last Para slide, the other thing is, is just to, último, to talk about chronic stress, um, which can be transferred from one generation to the next and impacts health, crónico, quality of life, and life expectancy, and chronic conditions vida, such as accelerated aging, vida, higher rates of disabilities, les, um, you know, variety, uh, autoimmune disorders, all of that is impacted eh, through chronic energy insecurity. So the data from 2015 that came out uh, two years ago tells Los us that across the nation, 40% of low-income households were forced to make a choice to pay their energy bill versus purchasing basic needs like food or medicine or cosas Now, como this is 40% for low-income households, 16% for middle-income households, and 3% for high-income households, just to kind of provide a scale of difference there. We also know that 13% of lower income households had to do this every single month, make those trade-off choices between um, basic needs and paying for their energy bills. We also know across the nation that the average household spends 3.1% on their energy bill, but a lower income household typically spends three times as much. Here in San Antonio, that difference is two and a half times. Also, Los hogares de bajos recursos pagan tres veces más. Aquí en San Antonio la diferencia es de 7.8 a 3%. And this can be explained También for higher income based on consumption power, energía por um, not only electronics, más alto but also los, the, the uh, temperature para, para points that para los higher income households choose. Ingresos While altos for lowest e income e brackets, más bajos. This, uh, this larger level of energy para los consumption per altos, foot esto se debe is very clearly linked to inefficient structures, whether that's consumo, inadequate insulation, or it's the los de kind of heating and cooling system that's being used in the bajos, house, or Esto se debe más bien a infraestructura ineficiente, the, the ya sea aislamiento, able to afford, or that the landlord has todo. provided within that dwelling. Y sus electrónicos, electrodomésticos. Okay. So moving into the topic that many of you indicated you were um, Aquí, wanting to talk more about, and, and I'm going to begin with some, you know, this is a framing, and then I'll move into some specific policy thoughts moving forward after this voy a dar un marco general, When it comes to energy insecurity, there's no bigger expert cuando than Diana Hernandez. Cuando hablamos and de she identifies energética. these four fundamental rights that you see at the top of the slide. So the right to a healthy, sustainable energy production, which speaks you know, in part to what, how is our power being generated? How are we using wind and solar and other renewable sources? Uh, how, are we, how are we providing a storage for those renewable sources? The second right to the best available energy infrastructure, which the clearly failed us all in the last few weeks. But she identifies that as a basic right. The third right is around affordable energy, which gets into rates, um, and I'll, I'll come back to rates in, in a couple of slides. And then finally, making energy, you know, this right to uninterrupted, uninterrupted energy service is really about making energy a basic human right, regardless of one's ability to pay. Sea Other experts in this field 
point to a framework otros expertos that includes en este, um, the, 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 en este the, the text dice. in the middle, um, looking at recognition that there's que a problem, acknowledging the vulnerab vulnerabilities of different populations, se um, procedural de justice, reconocer so thinking about who's las involved in decision making, que and, who's, um, and the fairness proceso. of the decisions that are being made. O sea, cómo es el proceso de las decisiones y si, si es justo. Distribución para asegurar que haya equidad y justicia restaurativa, que se trata de mejorar los daños que se han hecho. Mucha literatura levanta la energía de eficiencia como una manera de construir... Es una restaurativa de justicia para la energía y la seguridad. Incrementa el valor de la casa. Um, justicia energética in it, es, it jobs, es aplicar stress, justicia restaurativa a the the in las deudas de los so servicios públicos. Like said, Ahora voy a hablar más sobre las políticas y las ideas en la implementación de ellas. Y como pensamos en las desigualdades y el racismo en nuestros sistemas que energía Just remember that utilities in the U.S. invested $8 billion in energy efficiency programs in 2015, but only 9% went toward programs serving households, which is approximately 23% of the population, so it's very disproportionate. I don't know what that percentage is for CPS, but just quickly looking at the data from the STEP program, It looks like there's a similar disparity here locally, where we are Así not, um, está, we are not investing in energy efficiency to the no degree that we should if we're going to be proportional to the and the income en el, brackets of the population. De, so now I'm going to shift uh, into uh, talking a little bit about efficiency and rates before we go deeper into utility debt forgiveness. Um, this text that you see on this slide is pulled directly from the Natural Resources Defense Council. I don't know if Eloisa uh, was able to join us, uh, but, you know, talking about how energy efficiency is one of the most, if not the most powerful weapons that we have to combat climate change, the economy, and ensure that we have safe air and breathe. Um, one of the things that, that Greg pointed out recently, I completely agree with him, um, you know, CPS Energy is talking about energy efficiency as its fifth fuel, but why is it talking about it as its first fuel? Um, and clearly, groups no like the NRDC would agree that that is a major place, a start starting point for this conversation around energy democracy, uh, este energy es, justice, and, es una, and thinking about es un how every home can be as efficient as possible. Think energetic. about the difference that would have made two weeks ago if, if si every esto, home had si the type of insulation tuvieran la aislación, el aislamiento y la infraestructura necesaria hace dos semanas, hubiéramos podido prevenir la ruptura de las tuberías y otros, otros problemas que surgieron por ello. So, just a quick mention of um, rate design. Um, you know, CPS has said that they want, you know, they're creating a CPS rate advisory committee and, and those um, you know, if, if you have not applied for that and have interest si in that, please do. Um, they're seeking applicants for that. I want to bring a, a in a panel, few principles, favor, basic concepts a, on that topic. Um, this is from the National Consumer Law Center. Um, you know, first of all, that when we think about rate design, It should really be inclining so that higher usage rates you know, mean that you get charged a higher level. But that it's not, it's not just that simple, um, but that it's also, you know, you need to incorporate the notion of uh, you know, how we build energy efficiency, like this last slide we were talking about, particularly for low-income households. Um, you need to incorporate affordable payments and debt management for low-income households, which we'll move to next. And there need to be effective eh, consumer protections y tiene que haber to shield um, para customers from losing vital home para que los consumidores no pierdan sus servicios públicos vitales, como so la calefacción y el aire acondicionado. Ahora voy a hablar sobre la deuda y la condonación de la deuda, um, viendo a las políticas de otras áreas metropolitanas. 
Esto es donde comprender lo que ofrece CPS y he visto muchos programas de caridad, pero ninguno de ellos realmente profundiza en las causas ni se expanden más, a, a más allá de respuestas de corto plazo a las personas que están en una crisis. No hacen nada sobre los, las preocupaciones mayores que también contribuyen. So this first one is a El very basic policy. It es, is, es una uh, very much básica. a stopgap measure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, solo portray es un parche. it as anything more than that, but it speaks um, and focuses specifically Pero on uh, COVID-19. And so this COVID is from Louisville. This was announced es just within the last month. Esto se um, they're este offering mes. Um, a one-time credit un crédito único de condonación de la deuda de hasta 500 dólares. Para ser elegible, uno tiene que tener una deuda de entre marzo y diciembre del año pasado. No tienen restricciones de ingresos, pero debe de, de proporcionar documentación de su ingreso y declarar problemas relacionados con COVID. So going deeper, um, here's a basic arrearage or debt management structure that seems to be gaining popularity in a variety of locations. Um, and, and it's the same model lugares. in these two different es basic models, the same basic models los mismos in different locations. Um, so more, more recently, California um, has created California, this arrearage management plan at the state level and require their investor-owned utilities um, to incorporate this as part of the uh, the programs that they offer to their customers. Um, basically, if, if a customer has accumulated a utility debt up to $8,000, it will be forgiven as long as the customer, while in the program, makes an on-time monthly payment for 12 consecutive months. As long as they stay current on their bills, um, then that, that debt up to $8,000 can be forgiven. In order to be eligible, um, a customer elegible, has to have already been enrolled in a subsidized, el, el subsidized utility rate program for low-income people. They need to en un owe at least $500, and they need to be 90 or more days overdue. Y tiene que tener now, in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, there's a very similar program um, offered by a, a Fortune 500 energy company called También Eversource, programa, and their version, un, instead of limiting that ceiling at $8,000, it's actually at $20,000 per year Aquí, that will be forgiven of utility debt la deuda if a person makes an on-time bill payment uh, on a monthly basis. Si el and in order to qualify, um, the customer needs to be at 60% or less of the state median income or have some kind of medical certification. Um, they have to have a past due balance of $100 or more and they have to be 60 or more days overdue. So these next two are actually pulling from uh, the field of uh, water billing. But I think that they Tratan are probably applicable also to the I think the basic structure is something that we should consider. Um, so considerar. in Chicago, um, Chicago, this was started in the last few years. Um, the utility años. billing relief program um, has, has really kind of changed the way that Chicago is dealing, dealing with water bills and Chicago fall behind and fall behind con la, so, for, for this program, de agua eligibility is um, 200% of poverty, have to be at or below that. Para ser elegible, um, tienes while que you're tener in the program, a customer has a 50% reduction in their bills and no de disconnections, de um, which de is a common thing across, across no the debe, no va a haber the last slide Se in reduce California, la Massachusetts, por 50 and Hampshire as well. And like what you saw in that last slide, if the customer continues to make on-time payments for 12 months, then the past debt is eliminated. Um, one of the things that you'll see as you look at these programs and utilities talking about why they're doing this is that it's actually a net gain um, for the utility. By their calculus, as you can see from this quote from the city comptroller, in many cases, um, they're actually, by, by having a program where people 
you know, tener un programa donde las personas pagan, aunque sea menos de lo que deberían de pagar, por lo menos esa entidad está, está trayendo algo de ingreso y están forjando una relación más fuerte con sus clientes. Así que al final es mejor para ellos fiscalmente y también en cuanto a la relación con sus clientes para crear estos programas. No están perdiendo it's actually, dinero. It's actually, um, you know, en otras palabras, está ayudando con su deuda. Y el último ejemplo o modelo que voy a compartir es de Filadelfia. Old, um, Lleva algunos años. Been kind of tweaking their model, but y lo han estado cambiando un poco. Pero básicamente es un programa de asistencia um, por niveles. Esencialmente basado en tu ingreso. También probably, trata de las facturas de agua, pero creo que esta estructura también um, se puede aplicar and, and a la energía. Program, um, para este programa, eligible, you have to be para ser elegible, below 150 tienes que tener, estar um, en 100 o menos por ciento. Um, Yeah, I was wondering when Greg was going to realize that he was uh, posing as Cyrus Reed. Uh, good to have you El with ingreso us, Greg. promedio. Um, uh, you know, you can also qualify through some kind of a hardship, um, such as También, losing a job or si domestic violence. Algún como um, but basically, there, there are two tiers with domestica fixed rates. Um, and and the, También puedes calificar, uh, pero básicamente son tarifas fijas. Rather than being tied to usage, is tied to the que el pago no está relacionado con el uso, sino con el ingreso. Or actually into their budgeting for utilities, for water utilities. Um, so they, it was factored into a 10% rate increase uh, that they um, started in 2016. Esto lo planearon uh, anticipated that it was an $18 million dollar overall una tarifa, um, un incremento de la tarifa um, de 10% and, and as part of being in this program, a customer como parte de ese parte, al ser parte de este programa, un cliente tendría, se, a un cliente se le perdonaría su deuda pasada después de dos años de pagos a tiempo. Estos son mis recursos. Aquí dice que toda mi información, si alguien quiere ver esto más detenidamente, por favor, denos un contacto y nosotros lo podemos mandar esto por mail. Pulling a lot of resources, about 40 at the moment, and it's a growing list of, um, of documents. Um, Aquí hay una lista you know, creciente some, de documentos. Some, some kind of articles, a veces son uh, artículos, it, uh, links to a veces son I've, I've links para organizaciones. Doc, uh, Pero los tengo aquí en un documento en like Google que into, into, también puedo into compartir topics. si quieren aprender más. And I just want to close y as we kind of make this shift into Q&A and going deeper into discussion with this image uh, that you can also, imagen, it's, it's um, available through movement generation, uh, they were, you know, one of the groups that's been the work, uh, but the Climate Justice Alliance uh, that uh, Southwest Workers Union is a part of Um, also has this on their website. Y Southwest Workers I really Union love the vision that it offers of a, of a transition, a just transition, me gusta mucho esta visualización de una transición de una economía extractivista a una economía viviente, sostenible, renovable y basada en el bienestar de los vivientes. Cambiamos la manera en que funciona el poder. Of, of the way things are made right now, and also investing in, in our power, um, whether that's on a local level, here, reclaiming our ownership of uh, e EPS, or, or reclaiming our ownership in these nuestro. larger structures uh, that extend beyond San Antonio. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited as we kind of move reclamando into you know, deeper analysis. Um, and thinking about local action and organizing y organización y ver hacia dónde va esta conversación y le devuelvo la palabra a Greg. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, Muchas gracias, Tim. I think you're on present mode uh, still there. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, so I just, uh, 
Um, really appreciate. I thought that was really clear. Uh, you brought a lot of good information, and I'm hoping that we can uh, build. This is the dialogue that we're hoping to build upon in San Antonio. Uh, there's a couple of folks who had uh, questions that could have been the Q and A. I responded kind of just very uh, kind of like short responses, but uh, if Terrence or Pahara were to bring in. Uh, for, for further conversation. Quieren I'm not a Zoom wizard, más. so uh, no I, I, I kind of set this up in a way I think folks don't have, like pero we don't have you on video, uh, but I can't no unmute. Video so ustedes, if you put something in the, sta in the chat, si just type en el stack chat, in there, and we'll try to keep track of folks stack. who want to have more conversation. Y I will say that, that Terrence in the, in the Q&A function was asking about weatherization and, and energy efficiency as a key strategy to energy justice in San Antonio. Uh, it's it's a big question and it's one that we want to engage with deeply. I think actually the next call, the next program that I that I want to do, uh, would be answering that question and developing a platform and proposed policies uh, to make it so, right? Because there is some engagement uh, with CPS. Uh, there's a program we can talk about, Safer Tomorrow Energy uh, program uh, that just went out for uh, the next 10 years and I've got a lot to say about that. I'll hold that for the next call or briefly for this one. Uh, and then Pablo was, was asking uh, about hats off to recall CPS for pushing forward uh, and, and seeking a structural change uh, with the governance of utility. Um, so uh, let's see uh, where, where we are. If there's one new. Um, yeah, let me ask. Well, Terrence, did you? Terrence has got uh, their hand up. So, uh, Terrence, why don't you come in? I've got your mic hot, I think. Yeah, you can uh, unmute Terrence and ask your question. Okay. Can there you hear me? Are. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm where I'm coming from is energy efficient no, no, building, no, no, in particular yes. the, the passive house the building standard. Efficiency and I have some anecdotal evidence from de Texas tengo uh, how they performed vis-a-vis -vis standard homes. If you're interested. But what, what I am convinced of where I think it will eventually go is each city block will have its own microgrid. Es que cada and cuadra let's say 30 homes on that house, on that block, sistema. each built to the passive house standard and or similar reach code, si building cada reach code, esas cosas, and casas solar and battery, uh, both of which use direct current, okay? And anything with electronics in it uses direct current. Cualquier cosa so con electrónicos usa corriente directa. The building standard gets you 90% less Así energy for heating, 50% less energy for cooling, and if you had Así all direct current in the house, maybe 40% off the plug si load. That's a tremendous casa. drop in energy si tienes, requirements for si an individual en house. Then if you think energetico. in terms of the city block with its own microgrid uh, preferably y direct energía. current because it simplifies the building of that microgrid. You can aggregate the resources on that city block to provide like electronic uh, EV charging or provide ancillary services back to the big grid. And of course the microgrid can island in situations like you guys have just gone through. Thanks for letting me share that. that, that thank you very much. It's a really excellent, I think that's a, a, a big picture uh, where we need to be going. I think I can answer in the short term right now. Uh, one of the things I hope that we can lift up and elevate uh, would be a, uh, the creation of resiliency hubs. So we know that two thirds of the city were considered to be not on what they call a critical surface and lost power. Um, and we know that through testimonies to date, we know our utility CEO uh, has described Sabemos our grid uh, within Bear County and, and outside, like uh, we saw the map earlier, uh, to have been built kind of patchwork to just just constantly meeting the growth wherever the growth goes because this is Texas and that's where that's how it works uh, currently. Um, but the need to look at this disaster and say. Well, what communities were not safe? Desastre, what communities were actually more uh, at risk than no others? And where, how, where are these circuits? We really need to know where these circuits are as well, because 
creating a resiliency center like you Porque described in a microgrid that's a, uh, uh, firmed up or supported by renewable energy, battery backup. There's a lot of things going to be related to that. That's a great topic. Renewable. Really, really Hay interesting. I'd love to uh, follow up with you. Uh, we've got your email. And uh, Tim or someone else wants to speak to that. Uh, I want to uh, make room for that conversation a little bit more uh, before we turn it over to Pahara and uh, then I've got Meredith on the staff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tim? I, I, yeah, I, I was just putting something into the, the comments um, to say sí, that, yes, I, I love that thinking. It's not something sí, that I personally um, understand all that no well, but I think that is bien. the direction that we need Pero to go. Es it's, it, we, we also can expect a lot of pushback as, we, as we push for these kind of changes because they, they threaten the way that uh, utilities work Porque right now, not just our own, esto es un reto directo a la manera en cómo funcionan um, that's, that's los servicios reality, públicos but, ahora, but yes, esa es la realidad. To, to, to Pero sí, exactly debemos de pensar exactamente sobre estas uh, estructuras distintas para generar and, y distribuir and, and energía. I love, uh, well, Pajara, I love, I love so much generally, and it's, I'm happy to have you here. Um, Pajara, me da mucho always, gusto tenerte um, aquí. Um, es todo un gusto, really nice como siempre. Um, I, I, I want to tee, tee up your question, right, um, also, and I need to make your hot Quiero preparar right. tu pregunta um, y prender tu micrófono. I want to, uh, I wanted to say this before Pajara Quiero decir asks, esto asks her antes question, de que um, that we are in a moment right now, and, 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 and momento, what I feel like is uh, a losing moment. Um, where the, the conversation is rushing into, you know, uh, what we can expect kind of from state leaders. Uh, we want to harden things, we want to build more fossil fuels, and, 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 and that's, that's the way we're going to handle this, not like we're going to protect people and here, in here are the ways that, that people, we really can do that, right? And, and not just uh, float this out as, you know, a, a, another blank uh, check to the fossil fuel industries. Even in San Antonio, I want to just make a note, we just lost uh, probably our biggest ally at the, at the leadership fossil. level of CPS, uh, Chris Eugster to another um, energy interest, uh, and Paula Gold Williams. In the same same day, we learned about that announced that uh, they're going to slow their role on renewables, um, which is already you know. She's always been staying in the gears. Uh, of our utility when Ella it comes to uh, 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 positive transformation. So anyway, I just want to let folks know that it's critical that we build up our message and that we push it out there and we build it together as a community. So uh, Pajara, do you want to come in and, and ask your question? It may not be one for me, it may be for other folks, because I know I'm sorry, <laughs> um, That was, I promised Letty at the top of the call, it speaks slowly. Um, so I apologize. Um, Pajara. And it may be, a, and again, this may be a question for folks with the recall petition. Uh, is your, are you able to speak, Pahara? I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Recall CPS. Escuchen? Greg, can you hear me? Testing, I, testing. I do. I do. I'm sorry. I muted. Oh, okay. Muted. Okay. No, that's all right. Um, I, I just, I mean, coming through the grueling months of collecting um, petitions, meses trying to, de after 10 or 11 or more years of trying to get the utility companies to tune in to what we really need, que, and que being so frustrated with their mistake and their big mistake, I really see, I guess I want to ask the community, um, que, que, do we see that we need to keep pushing on this um, we're not just going to roll over and die. I guess it's my basic question. Simplemente queremos decir que no nos vamos a detener. Uh, yeah, and I heard no uh, in, in, in the Q&A earlier, I think the question was, what are we going to do? How, how can we sí, do this? Sí, creo que la pregunta antes era, to, ¿cómo to vamos a hacer esto? For that work. I mean, I think my... Others may have, will have other answers, but I think um, getting a uh, rallying around um, points, demands, uh, uh, is, is a big part of it. Um, there's, I will mention, and we'll, uh, maybe at the, at the bottom of the call, uh, three o'clock now, we've got more time to, to, just, to talk. But I want to make time Tenemos for, for Didi or, or for someone to you know, announce uh, another call, which will be tomorrow night after uh, tomorrow afternoon meeting of the CPS Board of Trustees. So um, uh, if anybody wants to speak to that broad point, uh, I welcome you in. Otherwise, uh, Meredith Dwyer has a question about rate structure, and which we haven't 
uh, gotten si into no, it. Meredith tiene una pregunta sobre la estructura de las tarifas. Okay, Meredith, you should be able okay, to, to speak. Ahora puedes I've got hablar. your mic on. If you're still here. Okay, I, can you hear me now? I hear you, yes. Good, thank Meredith. you. Meredith. Um, so, uh, I, my question pertaining to uh, the rate structure is we already know that CPS ya sabemos que CPS terrible rate structure tiene una estructura is, de tarifas uh, terrible especially hard on que es especialmente difícil para uh, los residentes y de gran ventaja para los negocios que usan la mayor parte uh, de la energía. Pero he notado que varias otras ciudades tienen estructuras mucho más favorables y en particular hay varias cosas que en Los Ángeles, el Departamento de, de Agua y Energía de Los Ángeles, que es sus servicios públicos en Los Ángeles, ellos tenían varias medidas especiales que realmente creo que deberíamos obtener aquí en San Antonio. Por ejemplo, una de las cosas que tienen es que notan qué partes de la ciudad en Los Ángeles Temperatures tienen temperaturas más altas temperatures en el verano together, o temperaturas más altas en general. También qué lugares tienen más heat, ventilación uh, natural. So different, uh, Así que tienen uh, rates, diferentes tarifas rates en verano para esas partes distintas de la ciudad. Y creo que eso es algo que aquí podríamos implementar porque ya vemos de, de una vez ya podemos ver uh, en los mapas de calor heat island effect and la, we could el efecto de la isla on the, de calor uh, urbana or, or superimpose that on the y si uh, pones ese mapa sobre where, uh, where la imagen de donde se ubican los clientes podríamos tener tarifas Podríamos inventar tarifas más justas que se ajusten a la temperatura de cada parte de la ciudad. Y esto de la isla de calor urbana también está muy unida al tema del racismo, porque muchas de las comunidades que están más segregadas no tienen muchos árboles para sombra y así. Así que creo que debemos de cambiar a una estructura de tarifa que tenga en cuenta eso, en vez de poner a la gente en la posición de que tenga que ir a, a pedir que les bajen sus tarifas. Bills for the households that are in a, uh, an area where most of the people there are in need. And so I think that we should do more to uh, make CPS energy and SOS uh, accept those rate structure elements as basics uh, upon which then they can't just say, oh, well, we are going to uh, admit you because you are not within our um, um, affordability discount uh, 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 program. So, no hay que permitir so que I, digan, I, I'm, I'm lo siento, no puedes ser parte de este programa porque no eres parte de nuestro programa de asequibilidad. Um, Pero más que nada, quiero preguntarle a Sierra Club y a un ciudadano público. That, no veo uh, que estén pensando it, en ello, o por lo menos mis esfuerzos para incluir uh, eso en lo que estamos demandando. Creo que no deberíamos empezar demandando algo que es casi, casi igual a lo que ya están haciendo CPS y SOS. Gracias, Meredith. Tengo una nota a los miembros del Comité Advisor que sobre el Comité de 
push a little bit back up on the, 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 the statement that that public citizen Sierra Club aren't doing this work. We got the rack. Um, I'm very very ese, certain. Ese, um, and in developing sitio, language around rape reform, públicos. I'd like to turn it over to Tim. I have a lot of ideas, and I think what we want to do, Meredith, ideas, uh, generally Tim, is. Uh, I shared earlier, I know folks came in maybe a little bit, but late. So we have uh, our current, right, um, list of demands from our open letter built uh, with many, many community partners within Climate Action SA uh, for these, you know, um, when it came to no rate increases until rates are fair. These are broad statements and, we did, and what we need to do is drill down and have very specific um, uh, prescriptions. But at the same time, we're, we're in a situation where there is a committee being formed to do this rate work. So um, there's a question right now of what we push for kind of in this interim period, kind of emergency measures, perhaps. Um, and that's really the point of this call. So uh, I just want to note that and then maybe um, kick back to, uh, to Tim if you have a response for, for Meredith as well or anybody else on the call. I'd love to hear what other people have to say. So maybe if you'd que, like to jump into this conversation, throw something más. into the chat uh, so Greg si can, can unmute your mic. Um, you know, just quickly, I would say, chat, in response, que, Greg, Meredith, you're, you're asking good questions. And, Meredith, you know, what I see happening across the nation, there are so many different tools, so many nation, different ways that we can look at the data. Um, I think everybody on this call datos. already knows and agrees that, 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 that this is something we have to address. Um, but but to making that case resolver. to present to city leaders or to CPS or whoever we need to convince, um, there's so many different ways that we can make that case. I think it's really just a matter of figuring out what's going to be the most effective argument. way that we can present the data uh, because there are many different ways that, uh, you know, groups datos. across the nation are, are telling this story and, and you know, for example, I mentioned a term from California, por ejemplo, um, a term you know, they de California. developed a report that Ellos is most, it, it's like half data and un half narrative, like they are literally telling the story, they engaged a lot of organizing groups they gathered um, anecdotes and stories organizadores, and pictures of people so that as they're presenting this kind of their information about what needs to change, it's not just the numbers, no but it's also numbers, very clearly about human lives. Um, so however we want to do this, I think there are many ways, ways that it's kind of a strategic decision that we need to make around uh, where we put our energy, um, what we think we'll have the most energy potency as we push the um, power structures that are. But I, I welcome other reflections on this. I think you're poder. asking a really good question, Meredith, and Creo que es una muy buena it needs pregunta, to be part of, of how, you know, Creo those rate structures and, and esa looking at historical trauma, si el, el like ver mining, has to be a part of how we work in the democracy locally. Y la segregación tiene que ser tomado en cuenta cuando got, uh, desarrollamos next, las políticas. Um, Russell wanted, he's been uh, tapped into a lot of the uh, response from elected political leaders and, and where that energy, where that conversation has spun out uh, to, uh, which is important to know, and that in, informs uh, our ability to organize uh, to meet it. So uh, Russell, you should have a hot mic now. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Me escuchan? Gotcha. Okay. Um, first, uh, we have had a, not, a crisis before. Hemos tenido una crisis antes. Similar meltdown of CPS Energy Management similar. in 2009, 2010 en el 2009, with the uh, fight and battle on the nuke. Um, during that meltdown, a um, committee was formed, investigations happened, and, and the, an investigation committee has been set up by the mayor, and I pretty much assume it's by the mayor, and a number of people have been appointed to it, including four city council people, a general, some other folks that I'm not familiar with. They will be meeting for the first time right, uh, at 10 o'clock until noon for two hours every Friday 
por dos horas todos los viernes hasta que tengan su informe. Reed Williams, and I know este a lot of folks, está liderado uh, por Reed Williams uh, y sé que uh, muchas personas about Reed Williams from his, uh, tienen opiniones sobre Reed Williams so, uh, a partir de su the, uh, involucramiento Crisis. He Pero was the one that got us new fue. board members, a search committee that brought us to Obenaby and helped things moving in the correct El que direction. Nos ayudó a que las cosas he moved on from that and was doing correcto. other things, and but now he is back leading this investigation. It's, I've had a couple of conversations with him already, and I know he's reached él. out to a, a number of other people within the Sierra Club and other organizations um, uh, to let them know and start spreading the word. The word should be out on the city's website. Ben Corzell from city staff is going to be uh, providing the staff uh, report, the websites, uh, the organization, the data in question, and the legwork. Uh, three components. One component is they're not going to have traditional citizens to be heard because they're only meeting in these two hour windows. But there's going to be the comment slash impact Very important that we document what happened, personal stories of the tragedy that happened. The second uh, box and call going off. Is that yours, Russell? I don't think so. Unless we have an artificially limited call duration, I'm not sure if that worries me. That's, uh, yeah, that's what it, you got going on. Okay. Uh, All right. the, sec the second component is going component. to be um, submitting questions. Submitting the questions preguntas. that they and the community will be asking of the CPS, SAWS, the city, and wherever CPS, that may lead. Um, he's been promised not to have limitations on his scope of the investigation no or where it goes, that it, no they will try to figure it out. He is not going to wait till the end uh, no to este issue a report. As they informe. find any answers, data or anything else of the questions that the community has sea. submitted, they will be putting that up as you go along. In the end, it will be a report issue on final habrá un the impact, how it was so handled, impacto, what was right, what was wrong, manejó, the whole work. Que se hizo bien, que this se hizo is mal, our todo. opportunity este for all of the things that uh, the impacts that que todos los happened because of the institutional nature long of the how it impacted neighborhoods and people differently than other parts. Getting this in is very important because it will have an impact on the rate structure, on the management, on um, the value of renewables, how each asset performed into technical details. So please watch out for this. Please participate in it. Please tell us, yeah. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry. What, what can you tell us about? Uh, are there meetings scheduled or how do we direct people? Las, it's something in las, process that hasn't been released yet. Es algo que ya está Mon empezando, hopefully es Monday, uh, Ben Grisell should have it up on the website. El lunes, la ya va the estar first event is going to take web. place in the el convention center. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was a convention center. He told me, again, I'm outside listening on the phone as he's telling me this. And they don't know where it's it's going to be no saben all live, where you can see faces of people and the participants. There's going to be nothing standing behind a telephone like uh, Paul Williams and CPS Energy, so you don't even know if the board members are standing there listening to you. Mm -hmm. The public will be able to show up in person on every meeting every Friday between 10 and 2 and they will also be able to uh, participate virtually. Great, Thank, that's a very important update. Thank you for bringing that here uh, to this group and we'll be following up and send out details uh, by email. Uh, I, I wonder if there's other questions for Tim um, as we kind of like cycle deeper, deeper into this call. It's uh, 12 after 3, um, and uh, if not, 
Tim, do you have anything that you would like to to add that we haven't gotten to? I guess the thing that I'm wondering, knowing Creo that, que, you know, at that initial poll, 55% of the group wanted to go deeper into que 55 de los que querían practicar más sobre la es so, enfatizar la eficiencia is, energética. Um, why would we, you know, is there any reason why we wouldn't focus on energy efficiency? ¿Acaso hay alguna razón por la cual no enfocarnos en la eficiencia energética como parte del marco de justicia energética y enfatizar eso a nivel local? Y tal vez también qué es lo que vemos como las barreras y los retos hacia para avanzar eso como parte de nuestra agenda. Curious what people think about that. Quiero saber qué opinan yeah, ustedes. Yeah, I'd like to hear from some others too. Because, I mean, I know for my part, um, you know, I put up those sí, the, the, the open letter points earlier. Uh, we, uh, parte, in Sierra Club, myself, uh, Cyrus, whose name I stole for most of this call, um, and uh, and a consultant out of uh, Massachusetts. We actually, uh, it's an interesting, we met with uh, Paula Williams, Williams, the CPS CEO, and several Williams, senior staff for a uh, three or four meetings around so, STEP, the Safer Tomorrow Energy Program, uh, trying to drive bigger, more ambitious goals uh, for energy reduction Tratando and to focus those reductions by investing in working más, the communities of San Antonio, for, for, for working families, improving the housing eso, stock, reducing bills, helping people stay in their homes, uh, decentralized sold, you know, things that work, that, that really casas, work at a neighborhood level that, that you were talking about, Tim. Um, and uh, I think uh, we're preparing kind of like some follow-up uh, comments on that. And I'm hoping that some of this we can develop into part of this campaign as we, as we review and renew uh, each of these issues and that, that this would be the call uh, for, for next week. And, and, but, 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 I, but I would love to hear from others who are on the call about that. Uh, and I want to make sure we make room for Didi to, um, if, you, if you'd like to, Didi, speak to, the, uh, to what's everything that's happening tomorrow. Are you there, Didi? Estás ahí, Didi? Okay. There's a in the chat um, the role of um, microgrids uh, and national security uh, as part of the value proposition for energy justice. So I feel like. Kind of went into that a little bit, but I don't know if anybody has anything to, to, to deepen that conversation here that may be a follow-up you know i happen to know that there's a um, conversation that's happening conversation in, está kerville, in kerville it's either kerville or fredericksburg I, oh, I fredericksburg. My, my hill country resort towns confused sometimes but uh, one of those towns is having a conversation Pero una about, es, está ocurriendo una conversación uh, about sobre community solar and um, and I think solar it's kind of moving in, in some of the direction that you're asking que está about yendo más o menos en esa um, Although I don't know that they're necessarily going no sé si the question you're asking. Um, certainly, yes, there are um, um, opportunities uh, to be explored. And I think on a national level, que that, is, that, is, that, that is a, a driver from what I can understand. Um, maybe, maybe it doesn't play out in the same way on Tal the no um, tanto sure a nivel local, pero a nivel like nacional DD definitivamente. Yeah, so Parece yeah, I was just going to say, Didi, do you want to uh, say sí, a few Didi, words direct pues, folks to decir the, uh, algunas uh, palabras sobre I guess both meetings that are happening las tomorrow that people que van a pasar can uh, be influential? Um, Donde yeah, las there's a link. Okay. Influir. Okay, sure, ahí hay un link. You, uh, real quick, uh, sí, tomorrow, rápidamente, recall CPS mañana, Energy World recall CPS is going Energy. to be having a Facebook Live slash uh, Zoom una, um, un event, event Facebook, called The Truth About CPS Energy and How We Can uh, Take Back Our Utility. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the history of our petition drive, drive uh, where, it's, uh, where the campaign is uh, currently. 
especially after campaña, um, our petition drive was, was stopped um, de the legal, uh, through a legal process by CPS Energy. CPS and uh, Energy what we can do to keep the amendments and going to hold our, our utility I uh, also in the chat session put the um, Zoom link so that you could register. It starts Ahí at um, 7 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, thank you Gracias. very much. Uh, I think I think we've, we we can we can we can cut out a little bit early, like I said, um, Boquillas. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, they took that electric line down and made all those nice scorpions first. Uh, okay. Boquillas, Mexico. Um, todo side, es energía solar. Track, but um, but yeah, like so 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 uh, so support. Uh, you can get involved uh, deep in uh, the work and the and and the press for energy justice. Joining the this call tomorrow. Uh, we will continue to work on uh, developing campaign language and priorities and goals. Uh, and, uh, please do share this video out. I'm hoping este that video. through both the, the Spanish language and the English, uh, we'll reach more people really who have had, um, been directly impacted uh, by the storm, but also have been, been doing this work or weren't really aware of CPS or how the utility functions. Um, there's a lot to be done. And um, yeah, I agree. Uh, thank you, Tim, for, for everything that you brought to this meeting and for those who were able to show up. Up and, and a lot of this for uh, Leticia to uh, join us uh, to translate. Um, and yeah, we'll keep moving forward together, Alante. And um, thanks and much love and respect to, to everyone out there working to keep our, our neighbors, our neighborhoods, and communities safe. And empowered.